You are listening to Directions from a Spiritual Tour Guide podcast. I'm your host, Chanel Scott. I'm a psychic medium and energy healer who has been supporting those on a spiritual journey for over a decade. I'm your tour guide into the world of the unknown, showing you that the magic of the universe is at your fingertips. I believe spirituality is simple and fun, and this podcast will make it easily accessible, giving you the real talk on all things divine and spiritual, helping you to step into the flow, manifesting your dreams because we all deserve to be living our best life. Are you ready for an adventure? Hello, sunshines, and welcome to Directions from Your Spiritual Tour Guide podcast. My name is Chanel Scott, and I am your host and your spiritual tour guide through this journey into the chakras. Yes, what are the chakras and how do we use them? The chakra system is this amazing source of information that we can use for deeper healing and understanding ourselves um, and our being. It is a topic that I have done a huge deep dive on over the years of energy work as the topic is fascinating, Um, seeing the connections and how things work and what it tells you about the body and the soul is incredible as you're doing healing work. But understanding the chakra system for yourself can help you have a deeper understanding of where you are and where, where things are out of alignment for you. Chakra is the Sanskrit word for wheel or disc. And we have these spinning wheels of energy within our body that um, help us to keep us in balance. Our mental, our physical, emotional, and spiritual beings come into balance through these chakra systems. Now, that being said, Our chakras are not in complete balance all of the time. And in fact, they're never really in complete balance. Uh, Maybe if you've had a really amazing energy work session and you've balanced everything out, but the reality is, is when we move back into the rest of the world, things come out of balance again. There are connections between the chakras and our physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual well-being. There's these themes, but also these connections to our physicality, our organs, our nerves, our systems in our body that are all interconnected. And through that, we can learn more about our being in the way that they are either balanced or imbalanced. So typically they're in excess, so they're typically open big and probably spinning fast, um, but maybe spinning slow, you never know, Um, or they're dysfunctioning, they're not working the way that they should, so they're closed up, so it's small, probably moving slowly, but sometimes quickly. Um, The spinning is a little bit different than the open and closed piece of it, but when we have these things in more of a place of alignment, it's kind of our ideal way of being. Just to give you an example, because often we think, oh, my chakras are out of balance. That's a really bad thing. But the reality is, is it's not really. Unless it's excessively out of balance, you're not having a major issue going on. It might be something really minor. And I want to take that um, or bring that to the forefront so you understand. So something as simple as being hungry puts a, a chakra out of balance. That doesn't mean that, oh, we're falling apart, our chakra's out of balance. No, it means that we're hungry and we need to do something about it and fix it to be able to kind of bring our chakra back into a place of greater balance. It's that kind of simple. But when we talk about the chakras, we often think of only seven. The reality is, is there are a lot of chakras in our body, but a lot of them are kind of minor or smaller and we don't focus on them or bring as much attention to them as we do to the seven main chakras that we're always talking about. I will say that I do like to work with the chakras in the palms and in the soles of the feet. Like reflexology, these chakra centers are kind of related to the entire body. So it's a really easy way to work on someone without having to move around too much. Um, It can be great for children because they're little. It's harder to kind of get to all their chakras because you're kind of putting hands on multiple ones at the same time. Anyways, they tend to not sit still as much. So you can often have a conversation with them, tell them a story and hold on to their hand and work on some energy work with them at the same time. 
I also used this method a lot when I volunteered in hospice when I lived in a different city. Then my patients were often uncomfortable as they were transitioning, and it was easiest to keep them the most comfortable by simply holding their hand. I could allow them to fall back asleep immediately as I was able to share um, energy with them to do some healing and cutting of cords to allow them to transition to the other side. Again, that simplicity of it when their bodies were typically so uncomfortable to begin with was a great way to work with that energy. So using the smaller chakras can be very beneficial as well. But again, we focus on those seven main chakras. Now, when we talk about the seven main chakras, I want to talk to you about them using time as us as a human beings um, to kind of explain it because I feel like this is the way to make it kind of sink in the deepest that we can really understand each chakra when we talk about it as in a fragment of time through history, basically. Um, where we are right now is in the heart chakra. Um, and I'll explain that a little bit more when we get to the heart chakra, but that's where we are in humanity right now is in the heart chakra. Our bottom three chakras are related to our physical well-being in this world and the physical things of this world. Our upper four chakras are related to our spiritual things. So there's those connections as well. So when we talk about those seven main chakras, those line up along the spine. The first chakra is our base chakra and it's uh, it's located in the base of the spine or in the pelvic floor. The energy of this chakra grows downward. It moves into the earth or connects us to the earth. It creates this energetic cord connecting us to the beauty of Mother Earth. It's grounding us down. This isn't a heaviness. It's not supposed to feel like we are shackled. It is simply supposed to be this beautiful connection connecting us to the earth energy. Then the next five chakras line up along the spine. These five chakras, their energy goes from our front and back body. They kind of expand outward. Then the top chakra is actually located just kind of above our heads. And it is our crown chakra. And the energy of this chakra moves upwards to the divine. It is our divine or spiritual connection. So you can see that divide in the body and how the energy goes up and down. And we see that physical and spiritual piece. That being said, they all have spiritual components to them. They all have physical components to them. It's just kind of the relation of those is either kind of more to our physical world versus our more emotional, spiritual um, kind of world. So let's talk about the chakras as a timeline over history. Because again, like I said, I feel like it's a really way to kind of digest the chakras by understanding them. It's almost like giving them context to story. So the first chakra is our root chakra or Murladhara chakra, and it is at the base of our spine. It's relocated in the pelvic floor. That energy moves downward into the earth. It is um, the color red is what it re is representative of. Um, and it's also connected to our sense of smell. Um, there are also flowers, essential oils, crystals, um, foods that are all connected to this chakra musical notes, this, the seed sounds, a mudra, um, that are all connected to the chakras as well. But we are just going to focus on the basics today and we're not going to go in a deep dive. Maybe we'll do that later. If you want to know more about the individual chakras, we can always podcast about that too. Drop it in the comments. I'd be happy to oblige. Um, so when we talk about the root chakra again, we're going to talk about the overwhelming theme of that chakra is survival. This is our will to live. It is our survival, our security, our trust, and our self-preservation. If we don't feel safe, this chakra is going to be out of balance. This chakra is spiritually, it is how we manage our physical world. So if we think back to the beginnings of time to say like cavemen, um, then that was a time where their sole purpose was survival. They had to deal with the elements and how to protect themselves from the elements. They had to deal with wild animals and protecting themselves from being attacked or eaten. 
they had to consider even the slightest thing as a scratch because if it got infected, that could mean death. As well, then we're looking at the food chain and being able to scavenge for food to survive. There were so many aspects of life that were simply just finding a way to get from A to B, to get from morning to night and survive the day. The average lifespan was much lower because of course, simplest things would take out our daily life because we didn't have things like medicine, shelter, um, those basic needs that we needed for survival. So when you think of that base chakra, think of those base survival things. That's the things that will put our chakra in or out of balance. The second chakra is our sacral chakra, the Svadhisthana chakra. It's located in the lower abdomen. So it's kind of between the base chakra and the navel in that lower area, kind of the, the pelvis, lower pelvis. This chakra is related to kind of our creativity and our passions and our sexuality. So sexuality, sensuality, uh, fertility, creativity, and exploration. It is about our one-on-one -on -one or one-to-one -one control patterns and their need to be confronted. So this is that real exploration, connecting with each other a lot more, um, discovering our sexuality and our passions and pleasure. This is the chakra that's related to all those creativity things like the arts. So dance, movement, um, painting, drawing, sculpting, music, writing, theater, all those beautiful things that all of a sudden we had more time for because we weren't just learning how to survive. We have evolved to figure out medicines and planting and harvesting and growing, creating shelters that were sturdy and kept us warm, fire and how to contain it to keep our, our space warm, to keep us warm, sewing, because uh, that falls into our creativity too as well. It's not a basic um, clothing piece anymore that it now turned towards fashion. There was a reason to get dressed up or have fancy clothes. Um, so there was this real shift in this era. I like to call it the Marie Antoinette area, you know, let them eat cake. Um, it was this era where we were more about the pleasure in life. What are the things that made us happy? Food, baking, cake, um, sex, all those things that really tickled the senses were the area of this. So th in this chakra, it is the things like our um, sexuality, our self, um, sorry, our uh, kind of who we are sexually is part of that, our sensuality, but it's also our creativity and our exploration. So the creative outlets we have, the things we have passion for, those are the things that will fall into this chakra. And when they're out of balance, um, of course, we see that happening in the way that we show up third chakra. And I know I really haven't touched on kind of what those imbalances look like. We'll go back and talk about that a little bit if we have time. Um, third chakra, solar plexus chakra, our Manipura chakra. So this chakra is located just above our, um, our navel. It's kind of our diaphragm is where that one lies. This is the chakra where um, there was this maturation of the ego. And yes, the ego comes into play. Um, we, the ego is part of our, you know, being human. Uh, this is our willpower, our personality. This is our identity, our self-confidence, our self-control. This is who we are through and through. This is a chakra related to stomach stuff. And it's one that we see off a lot, especially like anxiety and that sort of thing. Um, this is the chakra that really defines who we are. And we saw this shift happening probably the 50s, 60s, 70s is kind of the big shift in that era. Um, 
and it rolls right up into the 2000s. Um, this was when we decided to have a voice where we no longer wanted to do what everybody else was doing. We didn't want to show up looking a certain way. Nobody wanted to wear the mask anymore. There was these um, social pieces that no longer felt good. Um, we saw huge shifts in how people were treated and the shifts for um, kind of this self-expression, this standing up for what is right and equality and um, diversity and kind of the awareness of all of that as well in this era. So that is the third chakra, this, this, this place where we really decide who we are, who our authentic self is. And we see that through the revolution, the rising up, the, you know, politics kind of became this thing that was more talked about and things were not done behind doors anymore that people wanted to know what was happening in the world and they wanted to create change and they wanted change to come in a way that was better for everyone. Okay. So this is when we move into the heart chakra and this is newer. So we saw the shift into the heart chakra more in 2010 to 2012 was when that transition happened. We are in the age of Aquarius in the age of love. So this is very much the season for walking a path that is very true to our own hearts. Um, the fourth chakra saw a lot of shift and change for a lot of people. We saw a lot happen with, again, a rising up of wanting to do things out of the service for love and really loving ourselves. We saw yoga, meditation, um, self-care, mental health, all these things kind of really take a forefront. The secret, manifestation, all these things about creating this joy in our lives and happiness in our lives, um, more love in our lives, which is what came forward with this fourth chakra, this heart chakra. So it's represented by the color green. Um, it is in our heart center. Um, and it is related to touch, of course. Doesn't that make sense? Um, so it is about love. It is about relationships. It's about empathy and humanity. And we really, really, really are seeing this evolution. And yes, there was like a speed up of kind of moving through the chakras there for a little while because they were more physical things. They were more earthly things. And I think we're going to see a little bit of a slowdown. We're really going to stay in this heart-centered area for quite some time before we move into the throat. Although all of the chakras will again come into play in every era, but there's going to be that one that stands out the most. And love is that one that stands out the most for us. That era of about 2010 to 2012, we saw a lot of relationships ending, career changes, people moving, um, anything that didn't feel good started to shift and change and people wanted to move. And we're also seeing another kind of major shift like that right now. Um, it's funny, it's about 10 years later and we're seeing that major shift again. All the people that have kind of been dragging feet, kind of those things that we've been working on and not kind of totally come through with are really coming to the forefront right now to deal with it, to really create that more heart-centered way of being, that way of life that just feels so much better. Eventually, we'll keep on moving through the chakras, but let's talk about them because it's important to understand all the chakras. We're not going to leave any out. So the next chakra is our fifth chakra. It's our throat chakra, the Vishuddha chakra. It is blue. Um, it is found in the throat. It is represented by hearing, which is not surprising because this is our chakra of communication. So in this chakra, it is our communication, our personal expression, our truth, inspiration, and it's the flow of information. Spiritually, this is this piece of recognizing our strength of will and how it's measured um, by how we control ourselves. 
This is a chakra a lot of people have a problem with. And this one is the one that's related to thyroid. Typically, people with thyroid problems are people, they're yes people. They don't say no often. And so we have that. Um, it's the chakra that we feel close up when we're trying to speak our truth sometimes. Um, but it is very much the, the chakra that is represented to our voice, our voice of truth, our voice of expression, being able to speak like our unique self. Um the next chakra is our third eye chakra or our anya chakra. It is indigo. It is located in the middle of the forehead. It is our intuition, our perception and fantasy, and it is our pride and ability to make judgments and see beyond the visible. This is that one that everybody strives for, like opening up that third eye chakra. It is the inward seeing, the seeing inside. It is the chakra that really starts to connect us to the divine. It connects us to our soul. As you can see, your third chakra being out of alignment, for a lot of people, they probably don't care. It doesn't affect them. But there are a lot of us that it definitely would. I dislike it immensely when my third eye chakra is closed or is like closed, not completely closed, but closed up for whatever reason. Often that is in a moment that I need to not look inward and just need to be present with myself and deal with my situation and trust that that will open wide again when the time comes. It is the chakra that everybody wants to know how to define, how to open, how to do. Um, and we will definitely get into that uh, one of these days and talk about ways to open the third eye chakra. But let's keep going up to the top. The seventh chakra, the crown chakra, is our Sahasrari chakra. It's sometimes represented by violet or sometimes white. It kind of depends on your you personally and what you prefer. It is located on the top of the head. It is our spirituality, our self-realization. It is that enlightenment. It's our overall balancing of the chakra system and the channels of universal life energy. It is hope, faith, and our spiritual conscience. It is the divine. Um, so that takes you through the chakras. That takes you to uh, have a little taste of that overwhelming theme for each chakra system. Now, like I said, there's all sorts of things that are that are connected to the chakras outside of the kind of physical, mental, emotional stuff. So we kind of talked about more of kind of the mental, emotional, spiritual piece of it. But there's also physical aspects to it too. And we just touched on that briefly. So sore throat, um, cancers of the throat, thyroid, those will represent the throat chakra. Um, when it comes to the, for example, the base chakra, that's kind of our pelvis, our bones, our large intestine, our teeth. It's kind of more of these bigger pieces. So we can see how things come up based on kind of the themes of these. We can see what's going on. So if somebody is complaining about discomfort physically that are things that are related to those chakra centers, then we can kind of go, oh, what's happening emotionally and spiritually around that theme and how does that come up? It is absolutely crazy when I do energy work, I will be drawn to those areas, not just um, physically drawn to them, but I use uh, chakra sheets underneath my healing ba bed or table. Um, and I also love to use crystal grids under my tables. So I pick those two things before my clients arrive. And often I will find that the colors and the crystals that I have chosen are connected to the chakras that are out of balance for them. So being able to come into a session and recognizing the pieces of ourselves that are out of balance and going back to that information about the chakras really allows us to understand where the imbalances are occurring. It can help us to understand what areas of our lives we need to look at and how do we fix things to create this balance again. So 
taking a deeper dive into those chakras and the physical pieces of it, we can recognize where the healing has to happen. It is... It can be a, a multitude of different things that create that healing and it will be individual to each person in how they want to do that work. Sometimes it's more of a physical thing that we just need to deal with and see a doctor over a Western medicine or even Eastern. I love acupuncture to, to start to balance things back out again to get energy flowing the way that it needs to to deal with things. But also we can work with the energetics of things or we can work with our therapist or somebody in the mental health field to deal with things as well. As an energy worker, or often we're called healers, my job is actually only to hold sacred space and to bring awareness. The deeper healing has to happen within my own clients, deciding to actually do the soul work that is required. I think of energy work as kind of a band-aid or kind of like the kickstart to get things going. I can't actually do the hard work for you. You have to do that work yourself. But what I can do is bring awareness around those things that are connected. When somebody complains to me about something physical, I often can connect it to what's going on in the body and whether there's a physical connection to it or if there's a mental, emotional, spiritual connection to it. And what are the things that we need to focus on to kind of bring that all together? To decide where it is that we need to do the work to be able to great, get the greatest results. So that's my little dive into the chakras. That gives you like a little understanding of each of the chakras, where they're located, and kind of what their um, overwhelming theme is. You can do meditation work, visualization, um, you can move energy through the body, you can do all sorts of different things, hold chakras over, hold chakras, sorry, hold crystals over the chakras to help balance them out, um, or wear different crystals to help balance things out, wear a specific essential oil, um, you can eat certain foods to help balance out different chakras. And then again, always getting to the root cause of why that chakra is out of balance is always the most important thing. What is it that's causing the pain? What is it causing that imbalance to really understand on a deeper level where the healing has to happen and what route to find that healing that works best for you? Um, I hope that gives you a little bit of an overview of the chakra system and how we use the chakras to kind of understand healing and where healing needs to happen. Um, there's always opportunities to take a deeper dive into the chakras. I often teach about them in my yoga classes and in Yoga Nidra. And of course, if you are a Divine Map member, you are going to find some workshops on the chakras as well. We can actually do a deep dive on each chakra and it's incredibly interesting the information that comes up and how we can assess whether or not that chakra is in balance or out of balance and how it is affecting our lives. So watch for that inside of Divine Map. Um, the enrollment window for Divine Map is open until June 15th. Uh, it will probably open again early August for my birthday. Um, and founding member price right now is an investment of $29 a month, which gives you live uh, online yoga classes, uh, meditation, yoga nidra. It also gives you a workshop at least one every month. And quarterly, we will do a gallery reading of um, a mediumship. So there's lots in there. So please feel free to reach out if you want a little more information about the divine map or you can check out my website at www.fromtheheartandsoul.com i hope you enjoyed your journey into the chakras today uh from my heart and soul to yours have an amazing rest of your day